Okay, so here we go with another build. Today we have the AMT Coca-Cola Monster Truck, as you can see here from the cover. This looks to be a nice, fun build. And looking at the box, we can see how this can build up. Looking pretty good. I don't know about the gold there, but I'll talk about colors and treatment shortly. And again, two nice photos uh, representing how you can build up this bad boy. So, that said, you may be wondering, uh, hey, what about the uh, main uh, heavy tank you were building? <laughs> well, uh, actually, uh, I bring that up just briefly for a point here uh, because I think it's relevant. And what you may find when you're doing the hobby is that every now and then you almost feel like you, you, you start a project and you're way into it. And then all of a sudden you're like, you know what? You, you, you're not feeling it anymore. So that's not a criticism of the kit. That doesn't mean you've lost interest in the hobby. It just means, you know, you, your mood changed, whatever, you know, it's Tuesday. Who knows? <laughs> but, um, this is why it's nice to have a couple of kits at least <laughs> on hand because you can switch to something else build something else that gets your interest going again and you know then jump back in and, and finish uh your other project you know i know uh, that some people they may have two or three kits at a time always that they're working on uh because my time is somewhat limited i really prefer not to do that but at the moment you know, I did a, a bunch of work on the tank, as uh, you may have seen in the first part of the uh, Mang British Mark V uh, build. But um, after that, I, I, I looked at it and I was like, hmm, uh, wasn't sure if I want to do things exactly the way I thought. So, you know what? Put it aside. Go do something else. And back to on point, sometimes when you get these kits that are, you know, not so complicated, not so crazy, but just look to be a nice, fun build. It's a great way to, um, you know, get your mojo back and uh, get back into the enjoyment of building. So, lecture of the day. Let's move on. All right, let's see what's in this box. So, start off to show you. Now, your body comes in the package all together with the chassis, but we can disassemble this uh please excuse the british tank uh paraphernalia up there but here we go now this is not a uh modern monster truck which usually have the whole tube frame assembly this is uh built with more of a traditional beefed up uh you know beefed up but uh traditional ladder frame body sits on top suspension underneath uh, there are some monster truck kits where you get to do the whole tube frame thing. Those are, you know, really neat to build. Uh, but this is certainly something simpler to build. And I would even say, uh, just looking at the kit to start with, and I think the perspective I'm going to take on this build is if you are, let's not say completely new, although I think it would work, but new or preferably let's say newer to the hobby where maybe you've done one kit, maybe two kits. Um, something like this can be a lot of fun to do and certainly is not at a point where you may be like, oh man, what did I get involved in? You know, this, this is still, uh, it should be a relatively straightforward build. And when we look at the instructions, you'll see how this goes together. So that's how your frame looks. You also have your on the side of your interior, on the side of the pickup bed. So when this all goes together, like so and you can see it is tabbed to fit together and you know this once it's all assembled you'll get a nice rigid platform and even at this point just setting it down you know it sits pretty well so um even with the weight underneath it uh warpage even though this looks nice and straight shouldn't be any kind of an issue all right, so let's set that aside. Uh, if you're wondering what this is, <laughs> my uh, desk of endless projects. This is my uh, my little uh, 
tripodometer from my bike, which I took out because it was a beautiful day out today, and um, I want to get rid of some of the poundage I built up during the uh, lockdown while we were trying to support our local restaurants. Uh, anyway, took the bike out for a ride today and uh, realized my battery was dead for my odometer. So there you go. Another project. Anyway, back on point. So this is the bed of our pickup truck. Nicely molded. Looking good. The cab as well. Nicely molded. And you even get the uh, side trim detail is molded in there. This kit is based on a uh, Chevy Silverado 1500 series. And they even have that nice little 1500 molded in there. So uh, depending how you want to do the truck, if you want to step away from the uh, Coca-Cola treatment, you know, you could obviously do whatever painting or uh, design you want to do. But, you know, that's something there that you could go pick up afterwards all right for clear we have our standard one piece uh, glass here that amt likes to do however the side windows are open i prefer that uh, looks like we have a bug catcher and we get hey red tail lights i always like that um i don't know why it's a simple thing to to do them up for the build but um i don't know i feel like i, I got a little I got a little gift when <laughs> the, the, the clear parts are molded in color. So let's take a look at these decals because these are pretty neat. Now, of course, it's Coca-Cola licensed, so we get all these Coca-Cola decals, but we also get instrument gauge decals. We even get two sets. Uh, we do get this nice fizz decal with the deeper red for the front of the truck. And this, as I've shown in prior videos, this will make a perfect guideline to cut the decal out, scribe that line, well, not scribe it, but, you know, mark that line onto the body, and that'll be a line between painting the red and painting the white on that curve, and that'll work out just fine. So, because, obviously, uh, from what I'm saying, yes, I will be building it as the coca-cola truck so i'm going to move these aside we'll look quickly through the rest of the parts we've got some chrome we have a nice diamond plate molding for the uh front of the truck there we have our roll bar pieces engine pieces that's looking pretty good we got a nice grill uh you do not get headlights with this but you know a little white and um uh, we can fix that up make it look pretty good now this you will notice we get nice wheel inserts for the truck because the wheels themselves these are the outside of the wheels you notice it's just the big wheel hub and this is nice because we can spray this oops, in the red and then go back and then just drop these in and we have our truck wheels just like they have on the depiction of the package. If you want for extra detailing, you could always go in and just a little brush paint the, the base of the wheel, do in black before dropping the chrome hub insert in there and then have that shadow effect. All right, but moving on, we have some engine parts. This I find really humorous. They give you, it's molded in plastic, but a uh, spare tire which would be in the normal scale of the truck, or I don't know, maybe not, that even looks small for that. But anyway, uh, spare parts spots. <laughs> but the engine detail, the moldings look pretty nice. Now this kit I know has been issued a number of times, but um, you know, with, with different livery for the, the various licensings they've done. But you know, you can see some little flash here, but the parts themselves, they are looking pretty good, which is nice to see. Now we get into the meaty stuff, these big, huge suspension pieces. And this is where this kit should really prove itself a simpler build than a tube frame kit because that's your suspension. You put it on there, the drive axles will go underneath, drive shaft and shocks, and it's good. So much simpler than doing all the sway arms and everything, uh, the control arms 
for um, a live axle under the tube frame. Speaking of our axles, here they are. Nice and big and beefy for monster trucking. We have some control arms here just for that. We do get a brush guard, although it does not show up here, so that can go into the parts box. Uh, here again, we get mud flaps. I mean, uh, fender flares. There we go. Um, don't see them being used here. Uh, you know, that make, might make for a nice uh, addition here. I don't know. See as the build goes. But uh, yeah, here we go. Wheel backs. Got some more diamond plate. A different kind of roll bar. So uh, getting a nice little assortment of goodies for the spare parts. We have a hood, dashboard, and two pieces. That's good because, I mean, well, actually, this, they have all the detail molded in there, which is really nice. But um, it's nice to see they didn't try to mold this in one piece with this big bulging uh, gauge cluster on the dash. So by doing that separately, they were able to still keep a lot of detailing on here. So that's a pretty nice dashboard and steering wheels. Got some seats. Um, interior, typical AMT bucket. Uh, it does have a carpet molding. You can get cup holders. You know, I guess a place to put your cold one while your car crushing. <laughs> um, and we have some decent uh, door card detail, but of course the detail is shallow because this was molded as a tub. Um, you know, but it's not meant to be a super, uh, you know, complicated thing here. But yet we do get some really nice moldings on these drive shafts. Those look really good. So a little black wash, a little paint in there. They should shape up dandy. And we have our different sets of shots. They are numbered, which is good because if you look at them, the angles seem to be a little bit different between the different pieces and obviously there are eight so you're getting um you know two pair per axle side okay and of course the thing you're probably wondering most because it's a monster truck check out the tires <laughs> yes sir nothing says car crushing like some monstrous tires now to give you an idea of scale it is a 124th kit so here's my handy dandy vw rabbit my usual uh meter stick for size comparisons on you know the these bigger uh kits that are done in scale and we can see or at least get an idea of how awesome this thing's going to look with these giant monster truck tires next to a conventional uh 24 scale car tire so <laughs> so and of course we get four of those. So last but not least, let's take a look at the instructions. Uh, in this one, we get, and again, where this might be uh, something that is a little more friendly to people newer to the hobby. They have a description of some advanced modeler techniques. Uh, we have some basic modeling techniques for gluing and removing parts, blah, blah, blah. We have a little bit about the kit, but when you open it up, it is very familiar territory, the classic AMT exploded diagrams. But just to show you this, how uh, aside from the engine, you notice there aren't giant major assemblies in here. Everything just goes together pretty straightforward. The big leaf springs attach to the frame. The axles, drive axles, go to there, to the springs. The shots go on, and that's it. Suspension front and rear. Um, the pieces, you know, looks, the molding looks nice. So once this is together, you know, painted up, it should look pretty cool. Because the truck has this giant lift, uh, all of this will be readily visible. So uh, there are certainly options there to get creative with, uh, you know, detailing some of this with different colors under body, bringing a little contrast so it's not just all black and lost out. Um, but also I wanted to point out here, as relatively straightforward as these are, they do give you these uh, 
cutout diagram so you get a better idea of making sure that your shots and everything line up correctly. So that's a nice thing. Uh, interior, straightforward, not many pieces there, but there is pretty good detail in there, so you can have fun with that. And then we piece our guide together here. Final assembly, and it's done. We get a decal guide here. Uh, if it's not obvious enough on the box, where to place your decals. Now, uh, there's our roll bar. So yes, we are using the chrome one, uh, not the white plastic one. So that definitely will go into the spare parts box. Now, you'll notice AMT usually, um, with their kits, they use the, the metal shafts. This uses this giant peg and hub system. Uh, given the size of the wheels, the depth of the pegs into the hubs, there shouldn't be any worry about the camber being off. They should still sit nice and straight. I'll find out when I build it. If not, you know, a dab of glue, boop, the truck won't roll. But, um, you know, your wheels will be nice and vertical, which to me would be much more important than, um, you know, more important than it's vertical and doesn't roll than having it to roll around. Now, in terms of the color treatment, uh, looking at our box here, I will basically be doing it as the Coca-Cola truck. Most of what I see under here, I like on this, the way they show the buildup. I don't know if I'm going to go with the gold. I'm thinking maybe doing the um, axles in red. And, uh, you know, going to have to play with that, see how it works out. But to start with, certainly everything underneath there is going to start uh, black except the shots which I will probably do either in this white or in yellow because I like I don't know why but you know I like my yellow shock absorbers <laughs> so see how it goes and they show a red interior here I'm probably gonna go with a tan because I have um, I have the thing for tan interiors and I have that nice uh, Krylon sand pebble color which I've used uh, on previous builds and uh, I like that I like the way that looks so probably gonna go with that all right so that's how it shapes up Okay, so here we are back, and um, actually I was laying in bed, it was uh, 3.30 in the morning and couldn't sleep, too many things going through the old head, so I figured, uh, why not come down and <laughs> sit at the hobby table, but uh, hey, you know, opportunities, whatever. So, what I wanted to talk about here, a few little things, uh, one, we have some spare parts, so even have an extra transfer case which that may come in real handy uh, roll bar the odd spare tire the uh, fender flares and the roll bar i think those are the real wins on that one there will be some extra parts on the sprue for the engine build um quite a few actually but i you know, I typically do my, my engines, I hand paint that. So as I come across those and realize what I don't need, I'll remove them and they'll go into the uh, spare parts trove. So that will go right along. Now, in terms of cleanup, um, this is my snow report. <laughs> And the, uh, the weather forecast on cleanup actually isn't too bad. I mean, these are just extra pieces of sprue that I removed for painting. But underneath that, um, that's the, the flash I took off. Now, as always, you could go crazy with this process. Um, I do not. And what I would like to show is, you know, deciding how far you want to go with these, uh, you know, flash and mess cleanup and uh what is practical hey imagine that 
<laughs> practical with plastic. But, <laughs> but I found on the kit there are some really large injector pin marks, which for the most part are in areas like up here on the roof, which really not going to worry about because they will be uh, hard to see if seen at all. However, there were a couple in the front fender wells, and those I did decide to work down between my knife, my handy dental scraper there, and um, a little sandpaper. Some, uh, I think that's 300 grit I have over there. Um, because, being that this is a monster truck, and it has the very high lift on the wheels, the inside of that wheel well will become apparent. And um, being that this is going to be red, you know, sometimes uh, brighter colors, they can accentuate things like injector pin marks and stuff like that. So I wanted that cleaned up. So took care of it. Otherwise, things were looking pretty good. What I did come across, which was not so good. <laughs> when I was doing the cleanup on the chassis and frame, and hopefully this will come into focus, it's a little hard to see, and I actually did not appreciate its presence till I did my cleanup. If you look at this side of the frame, so this is the front end, you see it's a nice frame rail. On the other side of the frame, there was a giant uh, sprue remnant I guess from when this was molded with how many others on a big runner, this was removed. And this giant um, sprue remnant here, it actually, it's almost like a short shot on the plastic, which is, a short shot is when it, it's not completely molded. But you can see here, it actually has a dip into the inner side of the frame this was cracked, so I cleaned it up. Now this is gonna be sprayed. The engine's gonna sit in there. The cab's gonna sit on there. The suspension elements are gonna be in there. So I'm not gonna worry about this too much right now. I am gonna do the frame in um, a semi-gloss black. You know, semi-gloss black is not as good as flat black for hiding things, but uh, this may not be visible once it's done. But uh, you know, it is something to keep in mind that that may need to be repaired. And, uh, you know, these are the things when you go through and you start doing your cleanup, uh, you start to discover, which is part of the reason why doing this cleanup step right at the beginning is a really good idea so that you don't discover these things later when they become, you know, a bigger problem to, to try to repair. Other than that, the only other problem I ran into, now you see here, these are the um, gearboxes that will sit on top of the axles, which I have already glued together for painting. So they sit on top of there. Now the reason I bring these up, uh, they had alignment pins. You know, these were two halves. When I fit them together, even though there were alignment pins, the two halves were misaligned. So simple solution to that. Took my nipper, I removed the pins, you know, whittled them down so everything was smooth, and then I could build them aligned. Um, you know, it's not a big deal. It, it does seem a little uh, ironic, <laughs> I guess, uh, you know, or just flat out humorous that you get alignment pins but the alignment pins are misaligned so your pieces won't together won't go together properly but you know after that's done and i glued them clamped them overnight so they they are fixed in a good spot and they're all set and ready to go so paint 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 the other thing i did here oh and i also assembled the halves of the transfer case uh, one of these pieces, I forget which side now, <laughs> was a little, had a little warp in it, but I glued it, clamped it, and that's just fine now. So that's good to go. When I was looking at the wheels, now this is an assembled wheel, this is the outer wheel, this is the inner wheel. I had the wheels on the, the hub, the, uh, the, 
the uh, sprues. And when I was looking at them, my first thought was, well, there's three attachment points for each outer wheel. There are two attachment points for each inner wheel. But what was bothering me was the attachment points come right on the outer rim of the wheel. And I was looking at that and I thought, you know, uh, this is going to be a bit of a problem because if I paint it on the sprue and then remove it, I'm going to have big marks where it came off that I would have to touch up with paint and that might be really obvious. Now, this is not necessarily an issue just with this kit. For many kits, hey, here's this guy again. For many kits, this is typically the way wheels are done, but on a wheel as small as this, it's a small attachment point. You clip it, you clean it up, and it's not even visible. But this being a much bigger wheel, I was concerned that that might be a problem. So I took the wheels off the sprues and cleaned them up that way. So now when I go to paint this, I can spray it. And, you know, this is going to be inside the tire. Who cares? But I'll get, first of all, a nice smooth finish here that I did. Then I can spray it and there won't be any nicks or touch of paint or anything like that. I may be asking, well, what about the tire? Well, the nice thing with a giant hollow tire is they fit onto these wheels just like that. So there we go. And here with it in the tire, you can see even more how this outer rim of the wheel is very visible. And being that I'm going to paint it red, it's really going to be obvious if there were, not so much on the inside of the wheel, but on the outside of the wheel, if there were these big gouge marks from when I painted removed from the sprue and touched up the paint. So, there we go. Other than that, everything's going along just, along just fine. Um... Yeah, this stuff up here again, that's part of different builds, so don't pay attention to that. Probably should have said that earlier on. But the only thing that otherwise that I have done is, as the sprue remnants here indicate, I just sectioned the sprues for spray painting so that I don't get overlapping colors. I did remove certain areas so that I don't have or to minimize my uh, attachment point things that I need to touch up with paint. And uh, so here I got the interior. This will all be painted interior color. So at this point, this is ready to go. And go, I shall, because now it's painting time. Alrighty, until the next part. Got to pop in one little thing I forgot to mention. Looking at our chassis, as I was doing the cleanup, I realized this right here is actually, I believe, the molding for what would be the winch on another kit. Because it looks like a spool here with winding on it. Now, I'm going to paint that black. And that'll be the end of it. <laughs> the bumper will be there and everything else. So uh, this probably won't be noticed. But I just thought that was interesting to uh, spot that. And, you know, if you're building a kit, certainly uh, kits like these these AMT kits that are, you know, AMT is, is very uh, resourceful at recycling kits or, you know, multi-purposing their molds. For kit after kit after kit and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that you know from a manufacturing point of view it certainly makes a lot of sense but you do sometimes end up with things that make you scratch your head a little bit so but um yeah i'm just going to paint that black it should be tucked up underneath everything and uh out of sight and that'll be that so just thought i'd point that out all right paint time
Okay, so as you can see, color. So I'm uh, doing some painting. You can see I'm doing a little building, uh, but I thought I would stop in here at this point because I feel like I'm getting to a spot where it's really time to start putting things together and um, picking up from the painting, picking up with the painting from there. Uh, you know, sometimes with, with builds, uh, as much as uh, depending on your style or approach of building, you may be inclined to paint as much, if not everything, uh, before you start assembly. Uh, I find personally sometimes you don't really appreciate how you want to uh, color things or if you need to really do any highlighting with, with detail painting uh, until you start to get to the point where you're you're getting pieces together. So that said, here we are. All right. Now, there's a, a few little things I'm going to go through here. And then, uh, you know, that's it. We're going to going to start putting this this monster together. So let's start with some tires and wheels. And I painted them. Uh, I showed that about, uh, you know, getting in to have the wheel stand up so you could get a good spray cover. I did the circle of flat black in there. So when the wheel insert goes in there, that black will come through the holes in the wheels. Obviously I've been working on the engine here and, um, you know, I have it the way this is right now. I'm not sure if I may dull coat some of this chrome. Um, we shall see. But so far, you know, it's, it's building up just fine. It's a neat little motor. I did buy some ignition wires because I will probably be wiring that up. But otherwise, it's built as it comes in the box. We have a nice little firewall with some good detail on it. So... I went in there, picked some of that up with a black marker, and then just some uh, flat steel for some of the firewall components. The nifty uh, shock absorbers, went and did those with some gloss yellow, uh, silver for the actual shafts of the absorbers. Now there's still some uh, bits of detail paint to do on these. Uh, these pins, when they attach, I don't know how much of them will be seen, but uh, whatever is seen will go the uh, route of flat black, and that will take care of that. I may go in and touch up the bolt heads just to give a little extra uh, detail. Sometimes I find, um, especially when you're doing more of like a show vehicle like this, when you have lighter colors for some of the components, if you go in with... Um, a little bit of, of semi-gloss or flat black for that matter and just touch up the bolt heads it makes it makes a pretty big difference uh can really make things pop conversely if you're dealing with a lot of uh, dark colors you could always go in with uh, like a silver or aluminum and pick up those bolt heads and get a similar effect so that is that interior you know it's just a tub but uh as i had said before we had some decent detail on those door panels, so I just went in and dressed them up. Uh, now, again, obviously, this is uh, probably far more uh, ornate <laughs> and interior than the truck would have actually had. But being that's a show vehicle and um, the detail is there, molded on the parts, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> so I went in and did uh, some extra bits here to tone the seats. The uh, trim line on the seat between the two materials, that was a raised mold detail. I just went in there with a simple black marker to pick those up. Uh, dashboard, you know, same old dashboard deal. Uh, I added some colors like the silver here to highlight around the uh, radio and the vents. Um, these little spots are green. Um, I believe, I mean, in green as in your eyes are not tricking you. <laughs> I believe on this truck, they had two little, uh, um, LED displays in the dashboard, but, um, you know, this, this truck goes 
back a ways. So uh, besides the analog gauge cluster, you just had these two little uh, digital displays there. So I did them in green. Uh, I didn't do anything with the instrument cluster because there was a decal that go in there. So that will lay in and that will be that. Steering wheel, I haven't decided yet. So once I put the interior together, we get that sorted out. Now, on the mechanical elements of the drivetrain, what I did, I went in with some gunmetal to do the transfer case elements. And, you know, that it'll contrast them from the black without making them, I don't know, seem silly or stand out too much. Uh, you may have noticed between this and the engine, trying to work with a few different metallic tones to create some contrast and, and highlight some of the detail in the kit. So here we have the gunmetal on the engine. I've used uh, steel, aluminum, uh, gold. So, um, you know, a couple of different things and uh, hopefully that will come together and look okay. Otherwise I'll be doing some repainting. <laughs> on the uh, suspension here, you'll notice I went in and there's a little bit of a sheen on those leaf springs. I just did that with some of this uh, Tamiya uh, clear blue. And it again, it's just to give a little bit of highlighting detail. Now, moving on, we have our axles. Nothing to write home about there. Pretty simple and straightforward. The body with the masking scheme came out just fine. I started doing just a teeny bit of detail painting uh, under the hood here, the windshield wipers. Uh, you know, the radiator has to go in there. The firewall has to go in there again. So I'll, I'll do some more with that as I go on. The door handles and the locks I will probably do in uh, silver, but uh, we'll see how much of that is even seen because there will be those big Coca-Cola logos on there. Uh, haven't had to do anything with the bed. Probably don't need to do anything with the bed. This will probably stay just the way it is. Uh, with the gray primer and the red over, I already have the shadow around like the fuel door, so that's fine. Uh, likewise with the cab around the door seams, the uh, primer has provided that contrast. And again, a lot of this is going to be covered with decal. So that's that. Hood is just going to be white. Uh, the rear gate, I realized I forgot to paint the lower half of this, the red, to match the bed, so I'll have to go back and do that. Drive shafts, just picked them out in silver. I'll probably do, um, you know, some black panel liner on there just to give them a wash and highlight the detail on the universal joints. Last thing I wanted to talk about on the grill. Now it's just a piece of chrome, and I mentioned that we do not get... Uh, lenses on the clear parts to cover those headlights. So what I tried, you know, when I bought this stuff, the testers uh, clear parts cement, it said on the instructions that you can actually build beads of clear material with this. So I thought if he can do that, why not lay it in there over the, um, molding of the, the lens backing to create the image of a lens. Now, uh, I can't really claim, you know, real uh, <laughs> innovation on my own for this. Um, Cause as I was considering that, I saw on uh, HPI guys workshop, he did the same thing, but he did it with Mod Podge. And uh, what was nice about that was I was debating whether or not to try this. I saw him uh, do it with, with another AMT kit, um, with the Mod Podge and you know, it, it looked really good when it was done. So I figured, all right, let me give it a shot with the tester clear parts cement. And, um, you know, I painted the lens, uh, molding backing on the grill white. And then that's two layers basically just flooded it because it is recessed in the grill, flooded it with the clear parts cement, let it dry. And yeah, looks like uh, lenses. Go figure. And then I did the same thing with the uh, indicators in the front bumper. So 
that's it that's where we're at so i'm gonna start putting this boy together and uh should be looking really cool i'll probably come back because there's not a whole lot of assembly here i'll probably come back with another little um gab segment in the assembly uh, just to let you know how it is actually going together and uh, yeah then it'll be the final so let me get busy and be back with the next segment all right one thing i forgot to mention you'll see the paints lined up here uh that's what i've everything i've used to do the painting that you see here and as i've done sometimes in other builds i like to point this out because while it seems like a lot of paint these were all paints i had you know my little supply here in my mess of an area <laughs> so uh you know just again to um get to the point of yes you will have to buy paints when you start in the hobby but after you do a few builds you'll have a nice little assortment of colors and you'll find that when you build you know you really don't need to um you know go out and buy paint even for the truck itself the body uh, I use this poppy red, which I had, gloss white, which I had, and for the interior, I use the uh, Krylon satin pebble that I, for whatever reason, like that so much for interiors, which I also had. So, yeah, you know, when you get to uh, this point where a few kits into the hobby and you have all this stuff. You know, when you when you go to buy a kit, it really just be will just be the uh, expense of the kit itself. You won't be spending all this extra on paints. Uh, in fact, the only extra I have spent on this kit is for the uh, ignition wires. Um, you know, eight dollars. So what? Um, I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not going to sweat $8 among the rest of this. So, um, and that, you know, that is really like extra. I mean, you can build the whole kit without the wires and it will probably, um, from what I'm looking at here, will probably still come out really nice. Um, so that that's, you know, just extra, extra that I personally like to do, but you know, you could go through and build this without that. And like I said, you should have a nice machine anyway. All right. So now, now that's that <laughs> and i will get to building all right all right so here we go been doing some building so a couple of things to talk about uh first of all engine you know uh didn't do anything with that yet from <laughs> the last time so we'll just put that aside the rear bed you know, aside from the painting, there's nothing to do here. Um, once everything is assembled, I might have to do a little touch up in the back here. So that's that for the moment. So let's talk about the cab. Now, this um, was an interesting assembly. Interesting because of the way it goes together. Now, I have the interior assembled and detailed and put in there the interesting thing is the interior with this tab and these two tabs which is why i did not paint them so i could easily show you the whole thing just snaps in there now in the instructions they don't tell you how to put it in in typical amt fashion there's just an arrow pointing up okay uh, but you know when you, you go to fit it it will rapidly become clear that if you try to put the rear in first, you will not be able to get the front tabs in. So put the front tabs in first and then swing the rear in and up until that pops in. And you know what? No glue necessary. Likewise, with the cab clear, I dropped that in there and popped the interior in to see if it would need to be glued in place or if it would sit in place and it's sitting there just fine also i did not glue in the dashboard it does sit in two notches in the interior bucket and it had just a little bit of play and i figured you know what 
I'll leave it that way. So when I mount it up into the cab, if it needs to move a little bit, it can move a little bit while I'm siding the tub. However, because of the way the interior tub fit, that wasn't even an issue. And it's a really good fit. Now, if you look at the door seams here, you will see the black of the, there we go, the black of the window molding that I painted, that's the cab. And then the brown and tan of the interior tub. And look at that, both sides, that is, I mean, that's a, that's a great joint there. There's nothing that you need to do. It's a really excellent fit. Same thing along the front. If you look along the dashboard and the windshield, there's no gap there. Likewise, in the rear, although it's a little hard to capture on camera, but um, trust me, there's no gap there either. So, you know, thumbs up on the design of the kit. That's, uh, you know, excellent, excellent fit. So, and it makes it uh, simpler. You know, sometimes with kits, particularly kits that maybe have been around for a while and been, you know, re-released and re-released, siding your interior, especially when it's one of these tub interiors, can be a little, you know, does it go a little this way or a little that way? And you're not really sure. And maybe it works well in one spot, but you opened up a gap somewhere else and you kind of have to average out the uh, errors in the fit, but not here. I mean, boop, and it goes and that's that. Uh, likewise in here for the radiator, the radiator actually in the instructions isn't even shown. It's completely left out of the assembly. However, I put mine in because there's no detail up front here and there just would have been a big hole and the top shroud is molded into the cab. So unless you want to do the work of removing that, it's going to look kind of silly. I thought if you have the shroud and no fan. So I just put the fan in and like with the interior, the fan, it just slides right in there. It, it's a basically a friction fit between these big pins and two grooves on the inside of the um, front of the engine bay. So it slid in there and that's it. Uh, there are a few little under hood details there because this is not exactly a street engine, you know, when this thing sits in there. Um, you don't have all your usual stuff under there, but battery, master brake cylinder. Uh, these are actually shown in the instructions to be mounted in the kit. This little reservoir is not, but um, I put it in there because there is a marker on the front for it to be mounted there. And without the tank, it would look a little silly. The front grille, now you can see it's in with the uh, built up headlight detail from the tester's clear part cement. So that looks good. This too was basically a, a pop fit. There are two buttons on the bottom of this that sit in two recesses molded in the front of the uh, cab uh, fairing for the bumper, whatever you want to call this reg here. And these two points of the fender line and it just pops right in there and it's held in place. I did put two dabs of cyanoacrylate just to make sure that holds in there and uh, it's looking good. And the last part of this will eventually be the hood and if you drop that on there and you look at that, that again is a really nice fit. And you can see there's no warp, flush in the front, flush on the side, flush on the side, flush along the uh, vent. And, you know, just as a preview, the engine will be whoops, poking up through there somewhat like so. Okay. Now, even as good as the hood fits, um, I might just leave it off because there's pretty neat stuff going on underneath that hood. Now, getting back to the bed, you notice it has the little L hooks here. This will hook together, and I'm not going to do it now because it is a tight fit, but this will hook in and push up, and that will be your body. There are these two ledges here 
that will provide the distance so that your cab isn't smushed up against, uh, the bed is not smushed up against the cab. And um, yeah, the basic work on the body then would be done. So interesting stuff there. Now, let's look at the really neat stuff, which is the underbody. Now, first thing you might notice is, wow, that's, uh, that's some sloppy glue work there. Well, I haven't done any of the touch-up paint and did that for one particular reason. And that is so that you can see, uh, you know, normally uh, when I do builds and probably on most other build channels, I'm, I'm guessing here, I'm trying to recall off the top of my head, you know, you tend to see things get painted and then an assembly and everything's, you know, perfect. But uh, I wanted to show you one time how it looks with the assembly done, but none of the touch-up painting done. And in you know, like all the mounting points for the shocks, I haven't done those. There are the marks where I took off the gear cases because I had glued them online. Same with the uh, drive shafts, uh, you know, a little bit of overspray on these. You know, again, no marks from removal. So all that's going to get touched up. Um, and then I will do some detail on bolt painting to highlight those. So then it, it will all be dressed up and looking good. Now, since this is the uh, bulk of the assembly in the kit, I wanted to talk about this for a minute uh, for two reasons. One, it goes together great. So, <laughs> I mean, you just follow the instructions no problem uh do pay close attention to the numbers for the shock absorber pieces because like i had said in the beginning the angling and the geometry of these does vary and you know obviously if you take this one and put it over here it's not going to fit right but where they're on the parts tree together you know it's not always 100 percent clear these subtle differences so follow the instructions the parts are numbered the numbering that they indicate in the instructions is correct and accurate so just follow it and go along you have nice big attachment points for the giant leaf spring brackets so that's real easy to cite all the locations for these things are accurate so that the suspension sits right with the axles and the drive shafts everything lines up okay point two the only catch i had was mounting the, uh, let's just call them sway links here for, for the moment. Now, when you look at the instructions, which I will show you as an example, you notice here, this is the only siding for the pieces. So they give you the part numbers and that is correct. But the end here just kind of disappears behind the shock. And at no point is it really clear where exactly in this area the end of the swing arm is attaching. Now you notice because of the silver, I put mine right behind the shock onto the mount for the uh, differential axle right in here, because that seemed like the best alignment for those pieces in terms of keeping it basically parallel to the frame, which is what these really are supposed to be uh, helping accomplish. The run-in was on all four pieces, the arms are too long. In fact, if you put this on with the original length of the arm, this bracket lines up somewhere back here. And it's not because I had the pieces mixed up. The rear one obviously is longer. That would sight all the way up here. And there is a clear marking on the frame where these are to be sighted. So, all you have to do, make your adjustment. So I put the piece there, I cut off a length, test fitted, cut off a length, test fitted, until I had the right length, and then in it went. And that's it. All good. So, there you have it. Now, what's left of the build? Yes, I still have to uh, finish up my engine. Uh, you will get two extra drive shafts. This is the drive shaft from the engine to the transfer case, which will go right in there. That will go along. And I also wanted to part out. 
You may remember in the beginning, I noted on the frame how I had this big molding defect. And if I could just take a piece of paper and slide that in so you can see that again, you see that big gouge that was missing. But the miracle of flat black, <laughs> as I've said, to make problems go away, um, there you go. It, it's unless you point it out, you, you really don't even know that it's there. So there you go. That is the underbody. Last thing to show, tires and wheels. Now, I hope that comes up on camera, but if you remember, I painted black at the base of the wheel and then just um, used some cyanoacrylate to get the, um, the chrome hub in there. And I think that looks really sharp. So to give you an idea, that's going to go on the wheel hub and um, it's going to look pretty cool. So uh, it is all going well. Now, remember, as I had said, if you go ahead and build this, again, you will notice no mention of installing the radiator under the hood. And then when it's time to put the interior bucket in, as I said, you see there's just an arrow shooting up and uh, not quite as simple as that. So do be aware you have to put in the front tabs first, then swing it up and sight that rear uh, tab into the cab and as long as you do that it'll assemble beautifully now what's left well we got some of our chrome pieces here um i just dull coated that piece of diamond plate that will be sticking off the front i dull coated the um exhaust pipes there so just to, again to work in a little contrast and then we have uh, some other of the detail pieces, the light bar for the roll over cage there, rear bumper, side mirrors. There was this little accessory gauge, which I had started to paint and, um, you know, I forgot to put it on <laughs> before I stuck the interior in there. So spare parts, but hey, no problem. So it's looking good. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and, um, you know, do all the touch of paint, finish the assembly, decals, final review. So, so far, this kit's going well. And uh, I have to say, uh, also, one other thing, not only did this go together really well, it, it assembled in like no time. So, now obviously, I've built a few models, but... You know, I always try to look at these things in terms of um, someone coming into the hobby new and this being, you know, a first kit or maybe an early on kit. And, um, you know, at this point, I would say absolutely doable. And, uh, you know, you could get a, a neat product to go into your model collection. So I will move ahead and look to wrap this assembly up all right until the next segment okay it's looking like a truck <laughs> so yes um uh, even though the video is getting a little bit longer than i had thought it would i wanted to pop in quick with a few assembly notes okay nothing major just little things but um you know certainly things that could that could cause a little hitch when you do your build now uh first thing you notice i have the tires on there right now they do go on the axles over those nubs as you see here what i found was these did not fit inside the wheel not by any stretch of the imagination uh, and, you know, at first I thought maybe it was just the, the added uh, layers of paint between the wheel and the uh, axle peg, but that was not the case. Those would not go on there. So I took my handy dandy diagonals. I just trimmed that down and the wheel went right on. No problem. So that is good. Second thing, 
when attaching the body. As with the cab going, uh, the interior tub going into the cab, likewise the body has these tab mounts to the frame. So when you lay the body on, you just come in from the back of the truck, you sight in those two tabs, open up the body shell a little bit so you can get it over the chassis pan, and boom, it settles right down, and that's it. It's on there. I did add two, um, well, a couple of dabs of my regular tester's glue to the top of the chassis plate because the interior tub sits flush on that, and that's a good joint. So since the interior tub is keyed into the um, cab, I figured that's a great way to lock that in and now nothing is going to move. Likewise, underneath, uh, you can see now I did the touch-up painting. The exhaust pipes do go on just fine. They just make it under that front fender and the gap between the chassis, but they do in fact make it through there. So there was no problem there. The only issue I had under the hood was that my engine, and this is this is probably on me, not the kit, I could not get a good seal for my engine to the engine mount right under here. So what I did, and it's probably impossible to tell because I already did the touch-up paint, I used some of my uh, polystyrene square stock. I just cut two small pieces. You could use extra sprue and do the same thing and just put two diagonals from the engine mount to the engine to keep it from wiggling around and how it's in there nice and secure. So there you go. I did wire the engine. You can see that there. Uh, the engine it looks like it wasn't going to fit through, but boy, it just sits in there just right. And with the hood on, there you go. It's a nice clean fit. Now, just as the body and the interior tub key in, the rear bumper will key in here. And to show you just how easy that is, that's that. <laughs> you know, I'll add a little dab of, of glue just to keep that in there. Likewise, the front is going to slide in this little gap here the diamond plate piece will slide in there and that will anchor your front bumper other than that roll cage side mirrors decals it'll be done the other build note i've noticed while going through this is that sometimes on the sprues this is an odd design choice by amt but you can see here with these pieces i found sometimes there's, these are extra pieces obviously, but they illustrate the point that there's very little clearance between the gates and the sprue. So when you try to cut these pieces out, it's a little awkward getting the diagonal cutter in there and it just requires you to take a little extra time. Another thing, you'll see these here. Oops. I'll use the uh, rear bumper as an example. Or not, I'll drop both of them. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Props. <laughs> uh, but you had these giant tabs, basically, that, that were holding this in. And, um, you know, odd thing because they're not easy to cut. You have to be careful when you cut those that you don't crack the piece. Uh, why they chose to use such giant sprue attachments, I have no idea, but it's just the way it is. But certainly uh, a caution when you're building not to damage those parts. All right, so that's the end of build notes. Um, otherwise, like I said, the whole thing goes together great. So final assembly, decals, and then final reveal. Okay, that's that. Okay, and here we go. Final build reveal for the uh, AMT Chevy Silverado Coca-Cola Monster Truck. There we go. There's a mouthful for you. So, yes, it is all done, ready to go. Now, you've seen it uh, mostly assembled, but, of course, now 
got those decals on there so let's have a look and there we go looking pretty good i think uh unbiased opinion of course <laughs> so anyway uh it was a good build you know in the uh build notes there were just a, a few things that i had pointed out uh in terms of the final final assembly uh, i think the results speak for itself so i think for a kit for someone who's uh new to the hobby or uh you know certainly has a, a few kits under their belt you know great build it's a fun build uh, you certainly end up with a, a fun uh, product when you're done now of course as i mentioned in the beginning i did this with the uh, coca-cola branding and paint scheme but you know you, you could leave the decals aside do the truck whatever paint scheme you want get aftermarket decals do this you know which whichever way your curiosity tends to lead you through the build and you'd still have a, a real neat truck when you're done with it now uh, one of the reasons why I uh, advocate <laughs> for this kit and for these monster truck kits is they're they're just they're fun you know they're they're fun builds and you end up with a neat uh, product at the end now uh, speaking of the end the only thing that I would note besides the the final assembly issues were applying the decals now you'll notice I have the coca-cola decal split where the bed meets the cab and again around the door seams uh, as this side comes around around the fuel filler door um, I could go in and explain this but I don't want the video to get overly long so what I'm going to do is uh, right after I publish this video I'm going to do a little how-to video explaining how to get those decals uh, to work with the body gaps and door seams and things like that um, because this was a one-piece decal and obviously it's not one piece any longer. Uh, the only other thing I would say with decals, if you notice that little 1500 logo there, come back, there we go. Uh, I did apply that. That is a decal. I applied it over the Coca-Cola decal after that was set and done and I was finished working with it. And, uh, you know, there's never a problem with putting a decal over a decal. Just make sure the first decal is completely dry before adding decal number two. Okay. Now, I have the hood on there, but... Whoops. Here we go. Props. <laughs> there we go. It was falling off when I was working on it. And then when I wanted to take it off, it wouldn't come off. But there we go. Um, engine bay is pretty cool. It's relatively simple under there, but you have a neat engine. The engine does build up well. I did add the ignition wires in there, but you know it would it would still look great without them. Um, and as I had said in the beginning, that is really the only extra I applied to the kit everything else is built out of the box as it comes in the kit so as it comes around i'm going to flip it over and we're going to take another look at that i'm going to turn this off at this nifty underbody detail now i had showed it before without any touch-up paint now you can see it with the touch-up paint and you know adding in those black bolt heads on the shots and the uh, sway bars there uh, onto the differential axles there a little black wash on the universal joints you know little things can have a pretty big impact on your final look and you know it's a little bit of detail i like to throw in there and i think it adds uh you know significantly to what you see when it's done and now you can see really well into those wheels with the flat black behind the chrome wheel hub and it all paints up well of course the interior which we can't see too much of under the uh finished build but getting a little more light in there you saw that before the kit went together but there we go 
and we'll turn this back on and let it take another spin so like i said the kit goes together well there are just those few minor gaffes in the assembly but uh even though i would recommend this to people early in the hobby i don't see those things those those little build gaffes being an issue because with one of the most rudimentary uh processes of building which is test fitting you would discover those problems and they are simple to adjust the sway bar of course uh, the sway bars excuse me of course being the biggest issue but it's just a matter of snipping them to length and you know that's really not an issue if you're at the point where you can build this you can certainly handle that so uh you know and if if it's your first kit and they're giving you a headache you know, you'd always leave them off it, it's not critical to the build so that might be a hobby sacrilege but hey i i have said before and i will say it again i always think if this is your first kit the most important part of doing a first kit is finishing the kit uh because you know it's a it's a big confidence boost so once you get that done you know you, you can always go back to kits when they're finished and modify or work on other things uh, add other detail decals paint de details whatever you know a, a finished kit doesn't have to be a static fixed thing so i will wrap it up with that and enjoy your hobby so i will see you at the next build and once again uh all the good youtube stuff thank you for watching subscribing please do uh you know recommend the video share you know hit the alarm bell like i say all that good youtube stuff um you know if you find it helpful hopefully other people can find it helpful as well so that is that so just gonna let it take another spin and then i'll say goodbye to this one and get started with the next build which is going to be something a little bit different <laughs> so won't be the main heavy tank still had this uh, next project has came across uh, my awareness horizon and it was like oh, i gotta do this one next and then uh hopefully i can get back to the uh world war one british tank because i do want to finish that but in the meantime we got a monster truck so good kit if you see it pick it up build it enjoy it Alrighty.